walk up there. But the pure in heart, it's a highway to heaven. Walking up the King's Highway, it's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there. Walking up the King's Highway is a highway to heaven. None can walk up there, but the pure in heart is a highway to heaven. Walking up the King's Highway. this amazing day Amen. in which we've never seen before we say hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah is still the highest praise and it belongs to nobody but you despite how somebody feels right now despite the week somebody has had despite the 2022 somebody has had we come testifying your God and your God all by yourself Nobody votes you in and nobody can vote you out Amen. as we continue in worship God Stir up somebody's heart. Well, They'll hear the best story we've ever heard, and that is you love us. Amen. You love us unconditionally, yes. and you keep drawing us back to you because your love is unfailing and your mercies are new every morning. Bless New Sight. As they continue to be a church after your own heart. Yes, Look man. beyond the preacher's faults. Yes, and we'll see the need at the cross. In Jesus' precious name the sweet savior of our souls. Amen. Amen. This Amen. is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and I'll be glad in it. It is so good to see so many of you here this morning. So many new faces. I'm seeing the amount of people I didn't see week one. And All right. Didn't see last week in the wing. And I see you this week and hopefully 
We'll see you next week as well. It is a blessing to worship with you yet again on this Sunday morning. My fiance Shannon uh, had a funeral she had to attend yesterday and didn't get back till super late. And uh, her family and my family met this weekend. So we went out to dinner Friday and our families are Amen. doing the family thing. So she's <laughs> taking some rest this weekend. Keep us in your prayers. That wedding thing is something, isn't it? <laughs> Can I get an amen? Come on, man. Somebody, 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 let's stand as we go to God. Matthew chapter 5, mm -hmm. the first of the four Gospels. I'm reading from the NIV version. And it reads, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar... And there remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, somebody holler first. 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 Go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Mm -hmm. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Well. Do it while you are still together on the way. Mm -hmm. Or your adversary may hand you over to the judge. <laughs> and the judge may hand you over to the officer. And you may be thrown into prison. Mm. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Let's share together from this subject. I want to talk about ready to reconcile. Ready to reconcile. Ready, ready to reconcile. You may be seated. There have been few public incidents in the entertainment industry to grip an entire country quite like Will Smith striking Chris Rock. In fact, you can count on one hand the amount of times you've been watching television and literally your heart skips a beat not wanting to believe what you just saw. The amount of video views on YouTube is currently at 102 million. It was shocking. It was sad, but I knew the story was far from over. Jada finally spoke out a few weeks after it happened, and she offered these words. She said, I just hope that Will and Chris reconcile. Mm -hmm. Those were her words. The implication is that there's enough of a relationship there already to explore mending. I can only imagine how bombarded Chris Rock's text messages were after the unfortunate incident, but he finally got around to publicly responding to Jada with the following words. I'm not ready mm -hmm. to reconcile. He did not say that he did not forgive Will Smith. He said, I'm not ready to reconcile. Can you imagine if Chris and Will set up a camera and sit down and record a reconciling conversation? If a striking slap is worth 102 million views, how many views is reconciliation worth? Mm -hmm. As we navigate the potholes of this reconciliation sermon, I begin by acknowledging what we can call the abuse clause. The liberation theology of the black experience has gifted the entire world with an understanding of God's redemptive suffering. That is, unjust suffering is not God-ordained, even though God and nobody but God can cause all things to work together. For the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. The abuse clause recognizes that when a precious life is threatened by violence, reconciling with your abuser is not warranted. God's will for our lives includes the abundant life. And I can't live the abundant life if I'm under physical or psychological or emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. And with the exception of the abuse clause, I believe God's people are more prone than ever to dismiss the possibility and the need for reconciliation altogether. 
If you've been tracking the issue slowly in the 21st century, the uh, need has been on the feeling of freedom I receive from forgiving. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness means get it off me and stop letting it mess with me while I'm at work and mm -hmm. stop letting it mess with me when I'm not at home and mm -hmm. don't let it psychologically trap me. Not to mention Jesus said, hey, Peter, if you think forgiving seven times seven is what this is about. You got another thing coming. <laughs> he said, no, it's seven times seven. Implication is Christians believe that we extend forgiveness without limits. Turn to, tell them, turn to somebody and tell them that's hard. That's hard. That's hard. That, that's, that's not easy, but that's what the master taught. I once heard it put like this. Uh, apology accepted, access denied. That's how this forgiveness reconciliation thing has become so tangled. Uh, uh, apology accepted. Don't talk to me again. Apology accepted. Keep moving when you see me. Apology accepted. Don't talk to me ever again. Apology accepted. Unfriend, unfollow, block. And I'll get the popo involved if I need to. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, forgiveness glorifies God, and I'm truly grateful for the amount of times people have forgiven me. But if I'm going to treat you how God treats me, yeah. I'm going to offer you the human harmony that God offers you and I at the cross, yeah. then the end goal has to be reconciliation. Come on, reconciliation is kingdom currency. Reconciliation is a spiritual priority. Reconciliation is the theological reason why you and I enjoy the very being of God every day we live all over this country. There are these pockets called opportunity zones. Mm -hmm. Opportunity zones are an economic development tool that is stimulated by investing in distressed areas. In fact, there are five in Fredericksburg. One is right up the street. And out of the total 29,000 people, 27,000 people live in Fredericksburg in what is known as an opportunity zone. Mm -hmm. But can I tell you that the greatest opportunity zone within the Christian faith is reconciliation. Yes. Reconciliation among the disciples, among the believers, the children of God, has become a distressed area. And God is ever sensitive to the amount of people who say, I'll keep the tension and the hostility between my neighbor, but I want all the blessings from God that my life can muster. I know this is a sensitive subject, and I've <laughs> discovered that before any relationship of any kind can become irreconcilable, there are some preceding markers to be aware of. Number one, chances are before something becomes irreconcilable, somebody has to become irreverent. Mm. Somebody's got to just completely dismiss the God factor. Somebody say, what is the God factor? The God factor is no matter how bad it is, no matter how it's rotted and spoiled and how negative it's become, if I turn it over to God, God can do something about it. If I, if I give it to God, if I acknowledge it before God, if I confess before God, if I take it out of my hands and leave it at the throne, God's enough God. So gracious and so merciful and so loving and so restoring and so redeeming. Our God's enough God to turn that thing around. Turn to somebody and tell them, don't lose sight of the God factor. God factor. There's a God factor. Keep your faith in the God factor. And after something becomes irreverent, chances are it, we, we become irrespective. If I devalue your viewpoint, if I devalue your perspective, chances are I'm headed towards a place where I'll devalue as inferior. And after you devalue somebody as inferior, it is safe to say that you have found their perspective to be irrespective. Mm. After irreverent, after irrespective, chances are something becomes irresponsible. Mm. 
that there's somebody who's no longer handling their priorities like they once did. And once someone can't trust you to handle a priority, once someone sees how recklessly and carelessly you handle things that they consider precious, chances are they won't trust you anymore. Yes. Chances are if somebody doesn't trust you, you will arrive at the place where a relationship can be called irreconcilable. Yes. But that's why I'm glad Jesus preached the greatest sermon of all time here in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. Our Lord and Savior stands on the shoulders of God's revelation in the Old Testament but paints a new picture of God's soon coming kingdom that can be accessed here and now by faith. Yeah, and in yeah. this new faith reality that we call the Sermon on the Mount, reconciliation happens when I change your mind from conflict to change. Yeah, yeah. And the idea behind reconciliation is that of enough mutual concessions to redeem the pre-existing proper relationship and therefore ending the hostility. Point being, if the relationship was improper to begin with, you don't have to reconcile it because it wasn't glorifying God to begin with. The reconciliation looks like this. It's like extending an olive branch with an Achilles heel. There's a purpose in the extending of the olive branch. There's a, there's a purpose behind seeking peace and making peace. But, but that thing can hurt like plantar fasciitis. Uh, it's, it's extending on one hand, but, but there's a sharp pain down the left side of your leg on the other hand. But somebody got to know that sharp pain you feel on your road to reconciliation glorifies God. Yeah. And if there's some reconciliation to begin with, it's right here in the text. Can we get to it? There are three things that, that, that come up in this text that can help you and I be ready to reconcile. And it's the three words, leave, first, and settle. Mm -hmm. Verse 23 says, uh, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and therefore you remember that your brother and your sister have something against you leave your gift right there and go be reconciled with them. This lets me know that that we are to seek peace before approaching God. If I'm on speaking terms with God, but I'm not on speaking terms with you, I've missed something about God. Angry people and unforgiving people and tense people and always got to keep up some stuff people should be careful of how we worship because the sin of not being ready to reconcile is equally as detrimental as the original offense in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. Imagine the scene. Here yeah. we are in the middle of worship. Hands lifted and heads bowed in praise. Voices lifted up glorifying God. Blessing that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all of a sudden I stop preaching mm. I walk off to the left and I leave Like a madman only to remember somebody has something against me and I need to handle it right now mm -hmm. What Christ is saying is that there's something more important than me finishing this sermon. There's something more important than concert tickets and YouTube videos and ESPN and there's something more important than self-care and there's something more important than worship in and of itself and it's right relationship through reconciliation. Yeah. Notice the phrase, a brother or sister has something against you. Mm. Yeah, how you feel about it isn't the most important thing. It's whether a brother or sister has something against me and the original receding of reconciliation stemmed from the egotistical belief that I should have something against you more than you should have something against me. First and foremost, all have sinned yes. and fallen short of the glory of God. If you ever wanted to see your name in scripture, if I ever want to see my name in scripture, there it is right there. All have sinned. Second, if I believe in having something against you, 
more than you should have something against me. When I tell the story, I'll always make you the villain and I'm the victim and eventually the victor. That's how the story typically goes out. Not too many people tell the whole story, but whenever we tell it, you, you are the villain. You are Thanos. And I'm the Avenger who's been wronged and seeking reconciliation because my feelings have been hurt. Oh, how this text challenges that notion because he uses the word something. And something could be anything which means I'm not the qualifier of what should offend you and what should offend somebody else. One of the healthiest confessions you could ever make in your entire life is to confess that I'm not the caller or the shot caller of what should offend my neighbor. In 1947, civil rights leader Bayard Rustin uh, led what is known as the journey of reconciliation. Now, this was before the, the 1961 Freedom Rides. They were challenging uh, interstate bus segregation. And, and Baynard Rustin, who worked with Dr. King, had this fellowship of reconciliation. And he turned it into sponsoring the journey of reconciliation. There was a group founded in 1908 called the Fellowship of Reconciliation. And they sponsored the journey of reconciliation. Notice, they didn't have to pretend to be pro-reconciliation. They were all in on the reconciliation lifestyle before they ever sponsored the journey of reconciliation. Here it is. Reconciliation becomes easier to practice when you accept it as a part of your born-again identity. The reason why I'm ready to reconcile is because in Christ... God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting my trespasses against me. And somebody needs to know that ain't poetry, that ain't Kenan, that is scripture. And just in case you think God is mad at you this morning, I serve a God who wants to reconnect and restore and renew a relationship with you so bad this morning. He sent me all the way from D.C. to tell you, am I talking to anybody who's ever had some reconnection with God? You discovered God ain't mad at you. You discovered that God knows how to let it go. And the reason why you didn't get the job or the reason why the relationship didn't work out was not because God was mad at you. Second thing that comes up in the text is after I leave, I need some first. Need some, need some first. I need some, need some first. Christ is giving an illustration here that if you're in worship, and if you're about to offer your worship unto God, don't do that. The, the shocking, striking, all of a sudden of the text is leave. But you don't just leave to go to lunch and think about what you did and what you didn't do. You don't leave to go to the gym. You don't leave to go watch my Eagles win. You leave to first go be reconciled with your brother or your sister. And if we can be honest, the struggle with reconciliation is between the following two phrases. phrases. Just move on and make it right. Mm -hmm. That's the tension in the text. Should, should, I, should I just move on because God favors me and the sun will come out tomorrow and I got kids to feed, I got a job to keep, and I got a vision board to follow? No, God doesn't call us to just move on. God calls us to make it right because just move on places the emphasis on my emotional health and my soul. But make it right places the emphasis on the health of the very relationship. Because when I know somebody has something against me and it's easier to move on, it's truly just another way of saying it's easy to avoid the person. Yeah. And when you avoid somebody, you cancel them and make them invisible. And there's nobody who's off limits to God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Make it right means taking the initiative yes. as the best course of action in God's eyes. Sure, your therapist can tell you a different way to handle it. But as far as Christ is returned, yeah. our Lord and Savior, he oh, says... Yes. The, the best strategy is 
first. Yes. First, first. Somebody is saying, well, Reverend, when I signed the papers, I made it right. When I left the key on the nightstand, I, I made it right. <laughs> when I gave the ring back, that's, that's when I made it right. When, when I filed a restraining order, that's <laughs> when I made it right. When, when I left that job because that boss was playing psychological, manipulative mind games with me, that's when I made it also oh right because I didn't want to be there too much longer to begin with. But that's not the extent of what it means to make it right. All that may be true, but God is most glorified when I initiate reconciliation with little to no obstruction. Yes, 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 those, yes, yes. Those, those people in the Senate on Capitol Hill have a, have a process called Congressional Budget Reconciliation. Mm -hmm. and, and budget reconciliation is a special procedure that expedites the passage of certain legislation. And the reason why budget reconciliation exists is to overcome the filibuster. Mm. You know, the filibuster is just obstructive delay. On, you know, the filibuster, filibuster is just prolonging antics where yes. somebody comes to the floor and gives a whole speech for an hour that ain't got nothing to do with the bill <laughs> that they about to vote on. But here's how God works. Don't be like the filibuster, be like reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Because the Apostle Paul wrote, live in harmony with each other. Yeah. And the prophet Amos wrote, how can two walk together unless they agree? Yes. Because all of us could be here for the rest of the day, numbering the amount of relationships in our lives that have either soured or spoiled because we stayed to ourselves and refused to initiate the reconciliation God was leading us to. Amen. Because Amen. I'd rather trust in God's process than put my faith in a slogan like time heals all wounds. <laughs> time can heal, but time can also hurt. Yes. Yes. Time, time heals nothing by itself and if we depend on time to heal our wounds then we'll be carrying some wounds with us for the rest of our natural lives one reason not to trust time in and of itself is that delaying reconciliation always makes it harder to reconcile and being ready to reconcile means that I don't postpone reconciliation because God's process is uncomfortable or unfamiliar or unnatural. And that's why he gets to verse 26. That's why he gives another example where he says, settle matters quickly. Mm -hmm. He says, don't depend on time to do what my word can do for you. Yes. Don't, don't let the clock do what Christ can do. Yes. Come on, yes. Come on. Settle yes. matters quickly. Yes. Say it with me. Settle yes. matters quickly. If I'm going to be ready to reconcile, not only do I need some leave, not only do I need some first, not only do I need to be the one to initiate, but I need some settle. I need some settle. Mm -hmm. Jesus uses the image of judicial courts and prison cells to get his point across. He's saying there's a potential penalty to postponing reconciliation. So do all you can and do all you must to settle the matter quickly. In one of scripture's sharpest divisions, we learn a lesson in settle. The Apostle Paul, the missionary to God's Gentiles, and his ministry partner Barnabas fell out over John Mark. Mm. Not only did they fall out, the Bible says they parted company. One translation says, and they walked together no more. No more. In other words, they were so mad at each other, they didn't want nothing to do with each other. Hatfield and McCoys, Bloods and Crips, East versus West, whatever <laughs> analogy you want to use. It got so bad. Barnabas took John Mark. Paul said, you can have him. I'll take Silas. And after all of that happened, 
we get a glimpse into their reconciliation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Deacon Freeman, we see Paul defending the validity of his apostleship. He's trying to convince the Judaizers that, that I am just as much of an apostle as those who walked with Christ. Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, New Sight, he speaks the name of Barnabas. Yes. Come on. Yes. And nowhere in scripture does it say that they went out to lunch. Nowhere in scripture does it say that they went out to dinner. Nowhere does it say that Jesus or an angel came down from heaven and said, y'all need to cut this out. Come on, let's get to business because we are about our father's business to begin with. I don't know when they did it. I don't know how they did it. But when Paul mentioned the name of Barnabas, there was no criticism and there was no baggage attached. And somebody knows that you've got some settle in your spirit. Somebody knows that you're growing up in God when you can bless somebody and not curse them. That, that, that's how you know there's some settling that has occurred because you can keep your mouth off of them and speak on their behalf like they were in your own shoes. Ready to reconcile means I settle quickly to preemptively melt the snowballing effect of severing sin. Yes. Yes. How many know sin always has a snowball effect to it? Yes. And sin separates, but Jesus removes the reason to remain separated. Mm -hmm. And the bi biblical reality is God's word tells you and I more about waiting and patience than it does about quickly. Yeah, yeah, there are several scriptures that say if you are discerning a thing, if you are seeking God's face, take your time, be patient, and let the Spirit guide you. Mm -hmm. But that's not the example Christ gives right here, right now. There's a good reason why over 90% of all legal cases are settled. Yeah, a whole lot of people sue each other. It never goes past settlement. Because for the plaintiff, you know you get some kind of remedy. And for the defendant, you know that you get to control cost because if you go to court, that money going to the lawyer to begin with. Mm -hmm. So most people settle cases. And can I tell you that the greatest case ever settled is when Jesus Christ settled your case yeah. and my yeah. case yeah. on Calvary's cross. The faith reality is all believers know something. All believers know a thing or two about reconciliation. Yeah. Because I'm ready to reconcile because God gave us this ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to reconcile because we are to look beyond each other's mistakes yeah. and make good on maintaining relationships. Yeah. I'm ready to reconcile because, because God is ever ready to reconcile with me. I should be the same to do that with my neighbor. And because God is no longer keeping score, I'm not going to try to even the score with you. Yeah. Because there's only one score you and I need to be in tune with. And that is God won, Satan lost. <laughs> the cross won, demons lost. The blood won, sin lost. Lost. Hallelujah. Faith won. Fear lost. Yes. Love won. Yes, Hate lost. Yes. Peace won. Revenge lost. Yes. Yes. Come on. Preach. I know a God Preach. who's so ready to reconcile with you and I. God doesn't let 24 hours go by. Before providing you and I with new mercies. Thought so much of reconciliation. That he put his son. At his right hand forevermore. Yes, yes. Advocating on our behalf. Reconciling. Day in and day out. God look beyond Kenan's faults. Look beyond his trespasses. Look beyond his iniquities. Look beyond his transgressions. Bring them back into the fold that he'll understand and enjoy the redemption, praise, and blessings of the Almighty God. Yeah. I'm, I'm not just understanding 
reconciliation, but we've got to get to the place where we're ready to reconcile. Ready, 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 ready. Everyone standing, if you're here and you're not sure where you and God stand, you go to bed at night sometimes wondering whether God loves you or not. You go to bed some nights wondering if you and God are really on the best of terms. I'm here to tell you that God has already made a way yes, yes. to remind you of how much God loves you. Every time you look at that cross and don't see Jesus on it, he's ready to reconcile with you. If you've never said yes to the Lord, I invite you to come now. If you're online, you see the number on the screen. We would love to get back to you. Pray the prayer of salvation with you. Stand by you as you walk in your Christian faith and stand by you as you become everything God would have you to be. Is there one who's never said yes to the reconciling power of Jesus Christ? Come on. Amen. 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 Man, woman, boy, or girl, doesn't matter how young, doesn't matter how old, you can make it right by coming right now. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. You're a Christian already, but you're not sure that you and God are as close as you once were. I assure you, God's not mad at you. I assure you, God's not upset with you. Yeah, sometimes God's discipline can hurt, but it's only for a moment. Come on, put your trust back in God's love to refill your life. Sing it if you know it. God has provided. You can call the number right now. Salvation is available through Jesus Christ. Come on, let's sing it one time. Great is. faithfulness this morning. Come on and bless God for being so faithful. That's my story. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. I don't know about you, but God's been better to me than I've been to myself. Recognize that in this season we call October that the entire world turns towards one color and that color is pink symbolizing that cancer has ravaged so many and cancer has affected everyone's life whether directly from an extended friend family member co-worker fraternity sorority some way neighbor pink symbolizes that we're in solidarity to do all we can as the human race to defeat this dreadful disease called cancer. I ask that as we go to God for prayer this morning, you remember a name, a family that is struggling, suffering from the awful disease of cancer. Amen. God has given us what we need as the human race to not only stand up against the disease, but in due time, Make all the inroads we need to, to tell the cancer you don't have the last word. Because mm. our God is a 
healer. Come on, let's pray. God, for this day and for this worship experience, we say thank you. Thank you. Not only are you almighty, but you're all loving. Yes. And you're all kind and you're all patient. You're all gracious and you're all merciful, God. We come acknowledging that you hold all healing power in your hand. Yes, Lord. That sometimes we don't know why you choose to heal this person and not that person, but in your divine providence, all healing power is in your hand. Not only do we receive cures here and now, God, but you know how to end suffering. You know how to make sure the person transitions home to be with you. Yes. Come, God, lifting up all of those who have suffered and struggled through cancer, God, for every patient and every hospital and every hospice and bedridden, God, from every different type of cancer, in particular, God, breast cancer and prostate cancer, God, we lift up the names. For all we can do is be your hands and feet to remind them that as long as you're living, God has smiled on you. Yes, yes. Come, God, lifting up all of those who have lost hope in the fight against cancer. Mm -hmm. Revive somebody's spirit, God. Revive somebody's heart to know that if they keep their hand in your hand, in due time, God, you will provide the type of redemption and healing needed in their life. God, we come lifting up any member of New Sight who is suffering and struggling from cancer here and now, God. Continue to use your people called the church to be your hands and feet and not be too busy to call somebody and to stop by and to let somebody know that we're still thinking about you. We're still praying for you down at New Sight. God, we ask that all the heavy loads that we carry here and now, all the worries and all the stresses and all the anxieties that we've been carrying all week long, we come trusting that problem to you here and now. We come trusting that because you are sweet God, that trouble doesn't last always. Come trusting God that sin doesn't have the last word. We come trusting God that you still have hell on a leash. Mm -hmm. To anybody going through right now, you haven't lost their name. And you still know their address, God. We come thanking you for being that type of God. We can come and cast our anxieties. Come, God, praying for Shiloh New Sight in this season in which you are doing something you've never done before all over the globe. In this age of new ministry, God, prepare your people and ready your people to not only be spirit filled, but spirit led. That we'll be a witness all over this globe and all over this country and all over this state. And all over Fredericksburg that we serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. I know he lives because he lives within me. Teach us, God, to be ready to reconcile. Before we see that family member on Thanksgiving and before we see him for the Christmas holiday and before we write him off and cut him off. Thank you, God, for teaching us reconciliation. Teach us to extend mercies that have been extended to us time and time again, day in and day out. Bless our children, God. Bless our teenagers and our preteens as they navigate the dangers of school, God. Keep your hedge of protection around them. In this era where human traffickers seek to do our children harm, Come praying for a unified community against all manners of evil. Keep our children safe and they'll develop a heart for you. We love you, God. We love you because you first loved us. Keep us safe as we go home and until we meet again. By your grace and in your power. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think, including reconciling with people we deem enemies. Unto that name be glory, dominion, power, and majesty. Until we meet again, amen. 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 We are in the hands.